All right. Uh, I'm Garrett, principal engineer at School, an uh, online platform for building communities. Uh, today, I'm going to take you through how we improved our type ahead completion. So what is type ahead completion? So, uh, you can see it here if you've ever used a social media site. It's pretty familiar if you're tagging a user in a post or comment. You can see their name pre-completed here. What we don't see is how it works on the back end. So we've got a problem. This is a pretty common feature. When you've got users that are being tagged, uh, people are being mentioned in posts and comments, they're typing and searching each time they type a letter, anytime they hit a backspace. Uh, we had been doing this in Postgres, which is with like queries. Um, it worked. As we continue to grow, though, the table that actually stores the users is something that's used across the system. So this is slowing down over time. You can actually see on the right-hand side here, in the worst case scenario, we're actually timing things out. So what are we going to try to do here? Our goals. We're going to make it fast. We're going to make it scale. We're going to make it isolated. So how are we going to actually do that? We're going to use a prefix tree. So with a prefix tree, you can actually achieve insert and lookup times of O of n. Uh, in our case, the space complexity is O of n times k, where k is the average length of a username that we're storing. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is if you have users with similar and overlapping names, you do get some uh, compression, so things are nice and uh, collected. Uh, the other thing here is what we're actually storing. So you can see on the right-hand side kind of what this tree would look like. You can imagine each one of those nodes is actually going to store some sort of data. Uh, in this case, uh, that data is actually going to be the user ID of the user that we're trying to look up or match against. So what we need to do is anytime we type in a prefix or a letter, find a way to look up that user as quick as we can. And in our particular case, we actually need to do a little bit of additional work to go ahead and filter these users by additional criteria. So school has groups, uh, users are in groups, and you tend to tag people in that scope. Uh, so one extra bit that we have to think about here is how we might actually go about filtering these users once we've gone and done the matching. So how are we actually going to do this? Um, you know, at a high level, uh, we're going to compute and store each of the prefixes for both the first and last names, and we're going to put it in Redis. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a hash that contains a set of users uh, as well, where we can store uh, both first, last, and then what we call a search name. Uh, where we store and actually remove any sort of diuretical marks, we normalize them to a lowercase form. Uh, it makes it easier to find names when you have a lot more variety in the system. What we're also going to do is store those group membership details that I talked about. Our groups are stored by ID, so we can go ahead and just store those as a hash that contains a set of IDs of members in the group. And when we actually want to go ahead and do the search, uh, we're going to go ahead and pass the prefix in. We'll sort based on those usernames that I mentioned before. And then if we do need to filter down to a group, we can actually go ahead and do that intersection. And that's going to go ahead and limit what we actually return there. One of the other things that we're able to do here is actually take advantage of some of the things that Redis offers on the server side. So Redis will let you actually store uh, additional sets on the fly. So if you have a key value that you've already done some computation on, in our case, the sorting and the filtering, uh, you can actually save that. And in this case, that's actually useful because as users are typing, going ahead and hitting backspace, you're probably going to end up using the same sorted set each time that we have it here. So let's go ahead and look at some code here. I mean, this is most of our implementation. This is how you go through and actually add users. We're building up the keys on the server side, and all we're doing on the Redis end is using a Lua script to actually store these keys and values. Uh, but you'll see that we go through and we build a search first and last name. We do just the last name, because you can search by either. We go ahead and build, grab each rune, filter it to go ahead and sanitize it to that normalized form. And then we go ahead and get the user ID to actually get the keys that we need to go ahead and sort. You can see here how we actually do some of the, the filtering. So we're using the Unicode library to check if things are a letter or a digit, putting things in lowercase so we can actually find across the set of keys that we've got. And then finally, how do we find matches? So when you're typing, you're basically storing that same prefix. When we inserted the keys here, we computed all possible prefixes for the user. In this case, you're just taking what the user types and passing it into Redis. You'll see that user data key where we're saying star to sort. That's going to take advantage of the hash set that actually stores the raw full user first and last name and sort by those values. And then if we're filtering by group ID, we're just going to pass in that extra key to do that intersection. And on the right-hand side, you'll see how we actually pass it off to the script. So it's really just passing the keys and args. Uh, we get back a set of user IDs, iterate the matches, and then go ahead and look it up in our database. So what does that actually do here? So when we actually deploy this, we found out a few things. It, it works, it's fast, and, and it scales. Uh, and most importantly, it's separate from our Postgres table. So we're not dealing with any of the contention or locking that we're seeing as we continue to grow. Uh, 
So one of the biggest things we noticed in general here is you can see on the right, these are the same calls I showed at the beginning, same Grafana chart, uh, except now we're down under the, the 40 millisecond mark here um, fairly consistently. And this is when you're going and typing, you can go type a full name, hit backspace. The caching really takes advantage of the fact that you can go ahead and do these repeat queries without actually having to do the full computation every time. There are some gotchas. Uh, there's a few things here that are, are more important. So we do store, as I mentioned, data in a database. And then we've also now got these keys in Redis. Uh, with a database in Postgres, you get transactions. Uh, you don't necessarily have that with Redis. So you do need to keep the data in sync. So if something goes wrong, a transaction fails, you may find that your Postgres data was rolled back, but your Redis data is still out of sync. So there is a lot of uh, kind of work to make sure you've got the right tooling to repair in cases where things may have gone wrong. Uh, the other thing here is memory usage. So it's fast lookups, but that does come at the expense of memory over time. Um, as I mentioned, you can see as we get more users, the line is going up into the right. This is one of those lines that isn't necessarily bad. It's, it's pretty predictable, so we can actually plan for scaling long term. Um, the other gotcha here is that like advanced filtering use case. So in our sense, we're doing sorting and we're doing intersection or filtering by group. Uh, but if you need to do any sort of like advanced queries, advanced filtering to find different types of users on additional criteria, that's not something that's going to work as easily here because there's not quite a way to store it in Redis uh, efficiently. Um, you could do it in post, so you can pull set of IDs and then subfilter if you needed to. Um, that would work, but you know, mileage may vary. So what are our takeaways? Uh, trees are a great data structure when you need to look something up quickly by prefix. Uh, separation of concerns is a good thing. You can isolate your infrastructure, keep your database moving quickly, and, and don't tie it up for their critical path. Uh, and the other thing here is just making sure that you consider both time and space complexity. As we saw, that the trade-off was we made search fast, but we're taking up more memory over time. Uh, again, it's going to depend on your use case, which one you want to pick. And that is the end. So thank you. If you guys have any questions, you can send an email, find us at our booth for the next break, uh, or join us at school. Thank you. Thank you.